Is it still very raw for you? Always. Yeah. Yeah. Do you hold yourself responsible? Of course. Well, well who, who who threw the punch? Well, you see, now you would say that. I said it to him. Why did he make a fool of himself? Because he wasn't prepared for the interview and it was the wrong space to be in. And that's exactly why he's innocent. I am protecting my son. I love my son. I don't want to lose another son. Leave Christopher Livingston Newbank Jr. alone. But you didn't like me calling him a charlatan. No, you, you're talking... You, that's nonsense. Is it not? I, yeah, no, it's nonsense. But did, we did not have a situation before this show where you didn't think it was appropriate for me to have said that. This is up front with me, Simon Jordan. I believe there are a lot of vacuous, uninformed, unchallenged opinions out there. I want to get to the bottom line and cut through the nonsense. So with this podcast with William Hill, I'm going to get people with strong views who think they can stand them up to proper scrutiny. There's a good chance I might learn something along the way. And more importantly, so might you. Joining me in today's episode, a former WBO middleweight and super middleweight champion with multiple world title defenses along the way. Synonymous with domestic showdowns in an era with the likes of Nigel Benn and, My and Michael Watson. An ultimate showman in and out of the ring and one of boxing's most iconic names. And to some, an enigma wrapped up in a riddle. Chris Eubank, welcome to Upfront. <laughs> Rastafari. No idea what that means, but it's nice to see you. Well, I would uh, be glad to give you a, uh, an idea of what that means. Is it Patois? Uh, no, Rasta, far eye is not Is it really, complimentary? Uh, it's like gracing the environment. It's gracing the place and it's giving thanks to what we refer to as the divine providence. Very good. Well, nice to see you. Thank you. Um, Chris, one of the things that we do when we're talking, a lot of these, we've done about 30 or 40 of these and we've spoken to a variety of different sports, but one of the sports that I love speaking to and is predominant in the discussions that we've had is boxing, because I think there's something unique about it, something very different. And when I sit with you guys, and you're all individuals in your own right, and I know you'll tell me that probably, but there's something about you and the, what, what creates boxers and what creates what you do that I always start with, and it comes with the question, it's a very formulaic question, which is, what is your why? What is it that triggered Chris Eubank to go on a journey to achieve the things that you've achieved, to go into the fight game, a sport that's predicated upon hurt and pain and requires a certain mindset and a certain outlook in life. Talk to me about your background and what it was that brought you on a journey to do the things that you did and gave you the character that you had. Yeah, it's... Uh... Not surprisingly to anybody who's listening, but it's always going to be mother. Mother. Mummy. Yeah? Yeah. I'm a mummy's boy. Right. Always telling the truth, okay. always being honest, always being protective, always doing what mum wants, which yeah. is to protect and serve. But you had a difficult, or let me say not difficult, but you were a challenging child, it would seem, by looking at some of the things that you've experienced in your life mm -hmm. in terms of adversity or maybe your behavior, in terms of being at school and not being particularly cooperative at school and getting, from what I can read, suspended from school 18 times in the year and being on a pathway that doesn't look like a pathway to the man that I see now in terms of getting in the wrong side of the law potentially and those sort of challenges. So how does that chime with being a mother's boy and doing what mothers want? <laughs> well, what do mothers want? Mothers best want... Best for their children, don't they? Huh? The best for their children? The best for their children. Mm -hmm. So I was there doing just that, protecting children who were being bullied. Is that what it was? Uh, yeah. I believe it to be the case, yes. Yeah. Were you I bullied? Mean, huh? Were you bullied? Not by anyone outside of my brothers. Yeah. Uh, I couldn't deal with them, but I certainly could deal with those who were at school and mm -hmm. uh, those who were taking advantage of people who were less uh, enamored with intellect or reason or strength. And I recognized it because it was what was done to me at home. Uh, and I wouldn't stand for it. Mm -hmm. So it just seemed to me, uh, you know, school was the ground on which I kind of uh, molded myself. Mm -hmm. 
because I've, I've always been about being protective of those who are being taken advantage of, uh, which lands Writing me, injustices. Writing injustices. Writing them, yes. Yeah. Yes. But how does that get you booted out of school 18 times? Because if, if, you're, if you're fighting and I'll writing answer. injustices. I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll answer. Mm -hmm. So when I see a child being bullied by another child, whether that's intellectually or physically, I get involved. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, what I should tell you is that I was beaten up 70% of the time. Right. It may sound like I won all these fights. I didn't. No. I had to get involved. Yeah. Uh, and what it is with bullies is as follows. When you strike them, it teaches them a lesson mm -hmm. and it slows them up. It makes them think twice about putting their hands or, or, or bullying them psychologically. It makes them think twice about doing it. So I didn't win uh, most of these fights, but I was able to stop them from doing what they were mm. doing. And, you know, and it's been, a, it's been a fantastic life because it's been a life of fear, but walking into that fear mm -hmm. or that fire, walking mm. into that fire. And it turns out that I ended up in the world of boxing, the only vocation in which you can become a king amongst the people. Mm -hmm. It's the only vocation. Everything else is privileged. Everything else is double standards. Boxing is the purest of all uh, vocations. You'd call it sport. Mm -hmm. It's a way of life. Yeah. Uh, as best shown uh, by the gladiator, uh, Russell Crowe, mm -hmm. uh, Maximus. That's what men, men, uh, this word is something that is... Uh, You know, wonderful, like a woman is wonderful. Men, masculinity, it is a wonderful thing to be straight, to be just, to be correct, to be decent. And these are the things of which mothers want men to yeah, do. True. Because, because? It's character, substance. Character, substance, chivalry. Mm -hmm. Okay, gentlemanly conduct. So when my mother left, as she had to, for whatever reasons, she did leave. She went to America, yes? Yes. Yeah. I was about nine years old, yeah. now ten years old. <laughs> when she left, the only other woman I had to look at was Queen Elizabeth II. Mm -hmm. So what did I garner from Queen Elizabeth II? Conduct, behavior. And it was like, well, okay, well, I'll follow all of these. So I wasn't going to put up with the bullies at school who were bullying other children. But I was going to be a gentleman, and actually, that it fed into that. But you I, had a, I had a duty to, as it seemed to me, looking at the queen and her behaviour, which mm -hmm. was, you know, a lady. And if a lady is to behave, is supposed to behave in the way she does, then a gentleman is supposed to behave in the way I'm behaving, which is to be protective of those who are out here in the community who can't look after themselves. So. That's why I have a big thing about Queen Elizabeth. But, but the, and I've heard you say that before. These are noble sentiments and the right sentiments, I, I would hasten to add. But they seem to be in direct contrast to some of the behavior that you were exhibiting at a time, which is that you were going on potentially the wrong side of the rails, getting involved no. with petty crime. Petty crime, yeah. A man has to actually, or a boy has to find to, a, a way to get 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 the things he wants now these things were wrong but i was courageous so you know uh it's an interesting perspective chris that well i watched television and yes, all of these yeah. things what they're doing they're they're programming your mind so in actual fact you know we have a society that's grown up to be but that sounds like you're condoning i mean without being disrespectful condoning, to you, condoning no, your behavior by no, suggesting I, that because I, I, someone not, else is there to do, i'm not done something. Uh, sorry sorry i'm not condoning my behavior i am now telling people be careful what you watch yeah be careful what you let your children watch are you very easily influenced because it doesn't me, strike me that we you are. all are really yes we all are and let me tell you this Okay, if we weren't, I wouldn't have been able to achieve the things that I have done. And now I can I can go back and look and see and point out, be careful what you watch, because it does program your mind. And we have a society today of of what? People that lack fortitude and resilience. In that's my view. right. And mm -hmm. so therefore, you have a society that's weak. Strength is strength is let me be careful here and say boxing or the last bastion. It seems to me to be, it is boxing. 
where you have to be true. You have to be honest. When you're there taking a beating, you're going to stay there and take it. Yeah. Okay. I've heard so, you say so, that. Yeah. So, and when you do win, you don't belittle your opponent. Okay. You, you know, you, you treat him like the warrior gentleman that he is. Mm -hmm. You know, one thing I've come to understand, and I've always been going this way, but I'm here today, is stay absolutely objective. That's how I won the fight against Nigel Benn in mm. 1990. He had this hate idea. I think hate that's a good point. Makes you lose because you don't have your focus. You don't you don't have your focus on the objective, which is to score points. Yeah. So to come back to Mum or Queen Elizabeth II, I had the perfect beacon in which to actually follow what I should do and shouldn't do. Now here is what really uh sticks with me. I followed this behavior. Certainly coming on television mm -hmm. uh, in 1989 and, and trying to get to the top mm -hmm. uh, in this boxing world, I followed these rudiments of the Queen, these prerequisites. And for years, and they're, they're still saying it today, how I'm an eccentric or I am odd, an oddball. I am not. I'm following exactly the way in which the Queen would have wanted me to behave as would my mother. And I don't understand where but in this, this country... Oh, one second. And I don't understand in this country how I've done it. And I have all this respect now, all this love now, all this appreciation now. And it seems most of the country have gone the other way, where, you know, they're bickering, they're complaining, they're cheating, they're lying, they're stealing. They're... Who is... Follow your mother or Queen Elizabeth II. That's how I became king. Mm -hmm. When I say king, I mean a gentleman. That's all a gentleman mm -hmm. is. Well, it's a strange society, isn't it, that we're living at this moment in time. But I want to talk to you about your journey into boxing. Because, like you've said, I've spoken to... Carl Frampton and Billy Joe Saunders and Barry McGuigan and Carl Froch and Johnny Nelson and Tony Bellio and every one of them comes from a position of having alighted upon boxing for a reason. And it, and, and, and it always seems to be a story of getting away from something. Was yours about getting respect? Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, what else does a man want? Let me tell you what, if a man is not respected, that man will do some very terrible things to Because they have respect. no value of themselves. Uh... <sighs> Without respect, a man is, you know, you can do anything to a man, but do not disrespect him. You know, he's masculine. If he's idiotic, he's still masculine. Masculinity is a power and a beauty which is inexplicably beautiful. Okay? Embrace your masculinity, young men. Embrace it. As, as we look at women... And we see the wonder of women. Well, we are not to be wasted. We are not to be forgotten or or, or sidelined. We are beautiful creatures. We are wonderful creatures. And this is the wonder, the mm. beauty of life. But yeah, I, want, but I, want, I want to get a little bit more genesis of you. I want to get a little bit more about the... The, the change of direction in the boxing ring at 15 years of age. No amateur career of any significance at that point. You're going in at 15, yes? Mm -hmm. um, and you take... Uh, you described a bit of a beating. One of the things that you were absolutely renowned for is your remarkable resilience. Does it start from that point? Or does it start from the fact that maybe you're not getting the recognition or you're getting bullied or being diminished by your brothers? Where where, where this enthusiasm? No matter what happens mm. to me, why it's always 100%? Mm -hmm. Because of the, it's the primary thing about Rastafari. The primary thing. Okay. We work with this, the heart. We work with th this brain here. This is the universe. This is everything. But you work with your head as well. Uh, uh, because this, you're smart. This, uh, uh, I'm smart because of my heart. The head, you follow everybody else. The heart, you follow your own road. Let me tell you about what this is. This is my advisor. This is the king. Yeah. It's the same with you. For boxing. So everyone... Yeah. It's not just for boxing. If you want to be exceptional, yeah. always work out 
how to express what your heart says in anything you do. Because your heart always gives you what they refer to today as, oh, he's too controversial. I've done nothing but go with the heart, which is why I took all those beatings as a kid, protecting kids that were being bullied. So there's a heart means substance, character, resilience, absolutely, fortitude. Absolutely. The ability to dig deep where others won't. That's right. The head takes you in a certain place, the heart gets you across the line. What the, what the head does is says, the, heart, the head says to you, listen, it's the 11th round. You've not won a round. Yeah. Hold on, hold on. We, uh, I, 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 yeah. I understand. Go on, go on, go on, yeah. I, I've, I've got to say it like this. Yeah. Okay. You're in a fight you can't win. Your head tells you to stop. Yeah. Your heart says, <laughs> you dare. I dare you. Mm. Yeah, I, I dare it. you. I because if, 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 if you give up because your brain says you may be losing your life. Yeah, I get it. If you give up, okay, you are, you are, you are nothing. Yeah. To your ancestors, you are nothing to your family. You can never, you can never look another man or woman in the eye again and and hold that stare. You are a nobody. That's why boxing is the king of sports. Yeah, no, I, I get it. I understand it. And in the fights that you would have had, it would have been that component. It was that component that got Nigel Benn past Gerald McClellan. Yes, that heart and that yes. determination because he sapped and took McClellan's spirit, didn't he? Because McLennan was what he was and you in your fights with Watson that, and with that, Ben and the places yeah. that you had to go to. Yeah. That's a difference, isn't it? That's right. That's the difference. That's right. You make your pro debut when you're 19 mm -hmm. in America. <laughs> yeah. How many fights? You have four or five fights in America? Five. Five fights. Win them all, obviously. Yes. Yeah. You come back to the UK. Do you, hook, do you then hook up with Barry Hearn? No. So I, what's your journey? You've had four or five fights. Uh, and what are you looking like as a fighter then? What is, what's in your mind? What are you thinking? You, in other people's minds, like Billy Joe Saunders, I'm going to be a world champion. I'm going to be the best and no one's going to stop me. What's going on in your head at that time? I've, I've, I've spent all these years in the gym. I'm not giving up on this now. Uh, I can go back to word processing. I can go back to being this in my, eye, in my mind's eye, this... Uh, uh, secretary, as they were teaching me to be in school in New York. So, you know... Uh, but you're a fighter now. You're in a ring. You've had five fights. Mm -hmm. You're a professional fighter. Mm -hmm. What was in your mind, Chris? I've just given you an example. Got to keep on learning. Got to but, keep on... Got to stay in that gym. Stay on that road in the yeah. mornings. I've got to... I've, I've got to... I'm at home and, you know, I, I'm slipping the punches. I'm listening to my teacher and I'm slipping the punches. I'm catching... I'm catching with my elbow. I'm, I'm always being what I'm the Rasta Farai, which is head creator or head creative. That's what Rasta is, mm -hmm. head creator. So, so each individual has the, has the power. If you ask and if you are true and if you're using your heart, you can be taught uh, inside out. You can be taught uh intuitively but on a, on a micro level I are you are you building in your mind's eye after as a fighter you're fighting now you're you're that's what you do it's not, it's not what defines you but it's part of what defines you and given the lessons that you're giving me about the reality of what boxing brings what you believe it's the last bastion of certain things and that your heart determines certain outcomes are you now are, are, are you on a trajectory like other fellows that i am going to be the very best in this sport, I am going to win world titles. This is where I'm going. This is where I want to go. This is where I said I'm going to go. And so to bring it forward now to those who are listening, it would sound as follows. Speak what you seek until you see what you've said. And you don't let anyone come in between that. No one. Because if you, if you, if you stick to this, you will win. All you have to do is believe in yourself. But that's lateral thinking, Chris. Literal thinking is the journey that you're going on. And and you're suggesting to me now that you are building your knowledge bank, <laughs> you're building your experience. One of the points you've made to me in previous environments is that you listen. You listen to people. And you've listened to your trainers. You, you're the fighter that goes into the ring. You've got to do the job. But you listen to the, your teachers. So now you're now in the UK... I'm jumping ahead a little bit, and there is a rivalry brewing, and there is a fight coming, and it's a big fight, and it's a fight between two quite different personalities. 
Um, and the fight I'm referring to is yourself and Nigel Benn. When you look at that fight that came up on board, there was a lot of noise. Was it the first fight, Chris, or the second fight where you and Nigel were sat on Jonathan Ross? And that was the second fight. Was that the second fight? And can James Tony was giving it lots can, of that. Can you, can you just bring me back to that after yeah. I tell you this? Yeah, tell me. Let me tell you, let me give you an example of why I was so uh, mentally strong. Yeah, please. Okay. Uh, after an amateur fight one night, I got to a payphone in New York and I called my mum, who was working uh, with Dorothy and she's you know, 93 years old and she's a, you know, a nurse, if you will, live-in nurse. And I said, Mom, I'm like, Mom, yeah, yeah, it went well tonight. I won. I won, Mom. Now, what she said to me is where I became a man. How do you beat a man like this if, so I would have been probably, I probably would have been uh, 18. Yeah. This is what my mom said to me. She said, what happened to the other boy? How are you going to beat me after that? Explain that to me. If the person who I follow unconsciously, mum, I was mummy's mm -hmm. boy, I was always following her. Yeah. She used to actually stop sometimes and just put her bum out and I used to walk in, I used to walk into her bottom. You know, I always followed her and she would look around and laugh. I, you know, I was a mummy's boy beyond, you know, anything you've seen anywhere else. She was my everything, Okay. Now, now, if I'm 18 years old and my mother says to me, after I'm so excited, I've won the fight. Mum, I won. I won the fight. You know, things, it was, it's really good. It was a good performance, Mum. And she says, what happened to the other boy? What do you think that does to that, this person? What, what do you think that did to me? Well, my reaction would be it would diminish you a little bit. No, no. Nah, it didn't. Uh, uh, no, it, it made you no, look at something differently. Yes, it, right. it, it gives you a different perspective. That and in a brutal sport like what, boxing, you what, need you need that perspective. Oh, yes, because look at what it did for me. So what she did there, she said, I, "I said, I said to her, mum, why would you ask me about him? I mean, it's it's you know, mm. I'm you know, I'm your son. I'm your son, yeah, yeah." She said, "He has a mother too." Yeah. So then we follow on. I don't know, forty years on. And you see me on Piers Morgan 30 years after the fight. 30 years. He, you know, the first time I'm asked about it on TV, and I, I burst out into tears. That's the strength of character that us males have. All you males out there have it. Okay? And when you tap into it, it is beautiful. Beautiful. And what am I doing? I'm enjoying my career over and over and and it never stops. Why? Because I had a mother who who taught me to look at it from the other angle. The other boy has a mother too. Did you think it isn't that, it isn't personal? Was that in your mindset then when you're wandering around going into this fight with Nigel Ben who's hissing and spitting and telling everyone how much he detests you and I, what you know, what, and what you are and what you want. <laughs> what, Did you have that mindset then? Were you sitting there thinking with your empathetic view, attuned to your mother's thinking, oh, I must wonder how Nigel's mother must be thinking? No. What Where my mind was, uh, was here. And and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to send you a clip. It's in one of the pre-fight interviews where... I'm actually saying Christopher's are probably one years old at the time. And I'm saying, you know, it seems to me that Nigel, I mean, how how can you look at him? Because he doesn't seem to be teaching anybody anything. You know, he talks about hate. He talks about dislike. Mm. You know, if I was a role model, then I'd be saying to kids, you know, stay in school. do So you can see that I'm looking at him as you're all wrong. I've got to beat you. I've got to beat you because you're wrong. Mm. You so, are the exception, aren't you? Because most most fighters are, fu are fueled by something. You're you're fueled by something different. If you talked, if you watched Tyson me, over the years, let, he's hold, fueled by hold, hold on, a rage. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's let's put our finger on exactly what fuels me. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's called love. Okay, L O V E. You didn't love, love. Nigel though, did you? Objectivity. 
is what love is, objectivity. I have a job here to do. I don't hate you. I need to score points. Yeah. You're going to hurt me, but hurt is not going to be enough to beat me. He didn't know that. Right. He thought I was... He thought I was... Oh, he's a, he's a pretender. Yeah, he's a flake. Until... He got in the ring with you. And then he knew I was the great mm. pretender. <laughs> Nigel, hey, listen, it is what it is. I got brought up with love. Love in a ring is called objectivity. Objectivity beats you. Well, you. I didn't do it to you. Okay, you did it to you. And it gave the public such a wonderful it did. Uh, 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 expose on on spirits. The spirit of love will always beat the spirit of did hate. Did you um? Did you fear him? And you were, I, mean, I think it was. I think I think I might be right. I think I am right. You might say no. You didn't get that on your radar. But the perception was you were the underdog for this fight, right? Of course, yeah. yes. And did that? Did you? Did that fuel you? Did it fire you up? Did it make no difference to you? And did you have any fear of Nigel Ben? Fear? Okay. So let me go to Rudyard Kipling's F. He says, if you can keep your head when all about you are losing Losing theirs and blaming it on you, if you can trust yourself when all men doubt you, but make allowance for their doubting Mm -hmm. too. So if you can trust yourself, I know he's a knockout artist, but I know I can take that punch and I know it's going to come and I'm ready for it, but he doesn't think so because he sees me as some type of uh, sissy. Yeah. Okay. A dandy. If you can wait, if you can be patient, if you yeah. can be wait and not be tired of waiting, or being lied about, mm. don't deal in lies, or being hated, don't give way to hating. So I had, I had the prerequisites written by Rudyard Kipling, however, however long ago he wrote mm. that. So all of these principles, which is what the real man is supposed to do, stand on principle, irrespective of. A, of what the world tells you, stand on principle. You will net, you will not go wrong. One, two. I'm living proof of this. It was a vicious fight, though, wasn't it? I mean, <laughs> it was a fight. It was a proper fight. Um, <laughs> given the nature of that fight, I remember watching it. I was 21, 22 years of age watching that fight. I think the nation watched it because it was at the time when terrestrial TV dominated, and you get 20 million viewers watching a fight. Those were the good old days, right? Um, but you were there and you were in that fight. So try and take people into that into that ring with you uh, to what it felt like. You got dropped in the eighth round, didn't you? And that was a slip of which... Was it of a slip? Which, of course. Did it get yeah. scored as a slip? Well, no, I was still given the count, but right. look at the way I argue. It's almost like I'm jumping up like a little child. Ah, slip, no, it's a slip. But yeah. by the time you got to eight, oh, okay, I'm okay. Yeah. Referee's not listening. You got to abide by the rules. Yeah. If you don't follow the rules, you're out. Now, you know, may I say at this time where rules are concerned, the British Boxing Board of Control are the rules. I agree. They are the law. Now, the reason why there are weights, 147 fights 147, not 160. I agree. 147 doesn't fight 160. We can get to that. That is Mm. running a mock. I agree. That is actually trampling boxing. You know what that's about, don't you? Uh, Tell me. It's about money, isn't it? Okay, but if and if money for lots can, of wrong people, and if money can supersede these principles, then these people have to be held to uh, account. Held to account. They mm. have to be held to account, and that's the law. Yeah. So what am I doing? Now, now I'm going to tell me, you take this. Take me back to the fight with 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 with, with Ben Deputy. Okay, yeah. You may. I want to understand what's going on mm. in that ring with you. Mm. Apart from anything else, I can do this. Yeah. I can do this. I must do it or I can do it. I can, meaning that no matter what you've done, so long as I'm actually in front of you, then I'm going to beat you. Now, obviously, I have so much on my side, which is of, it's not of my doing. It's of his doing, which is, which is, he wasn't objective. He was subjective. Well, let me throw your words back at you. What is your, in that fight, mm-hmm. in that battle, mm-hmm. what is your brain telling you? And what is your heart telling you? Brain is telling you, hey, you know. This is hard work. No, it's, yeah, you, I think, you know, you, 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 you better quit. In the fourth round, he hit me with an uppercut, which slit. I didn't have the gum, the, the gum shield I had mm-hmm. only the, was only the top, for the top. So my teeth slipped, sorry, my tongue slipped between my bottom teeth yeah. and the mud, and the, 
and the um, the, the, the 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 mouth guard, and uh, he moved his uppercut, and it, it slit like a a half inch gash in my tongue. What? So do you understand? Pain is not enough to beat me. You have to, you have to separate my my uh, my nervous system from my from my muscles. Mm -hmm. You have to knock me out. I, otherwise, I am not stopping. Mm -hmm. And so everything that he did to himself, so if you look back now, you'll see that he, he had a a record uh, coming out uh, if he would have won the fight. A week after the fight, there was a record coming out called Stand and Fight. And, you know, you, you can see all his... Uh, his team in the ring dancing and you know stand and fight and he's dancing you haven't got your mind on the yeah on the job you know so so he beat himself and and i he helped me to beat him by not being objective that's what i teach be objective was it an be real was it an everest for you was that an everest moment yes. Do you understand what i mean yeah yes yeah yeah that was the everest at the time yeah uh, and and maintained an Everest position, or did no, you? No, Michael Watson, yeah. most right. certainly, and straight off, you know, yeah. Michael Watson and I in uh, an audience, an audience with, yeah, you know, I'd love to do that for Michael because he's not made any money over all these yeah. years, mm -hmm. and he beat Nigel, mm -hmm. he beat him. So look at the world and how we pay lip service. Mm. You know, Michael Watson was and is now the people's champion. Give him something back, you know. Get, let's do something for Michael. Turn up. Because let me tell you what, whatever Nigel put me through cannot be compared to what Michael Watson put me through. I didn't win. I only won a one minute of that fight. Mm -hmm. Irrespective of what you hear uh, Jim Watt saying. Mm -hmm. Irrespective of what these commentators were saying. Because they're not feeling it. You know, I'm a, yeah. I'm, I'm a great actor. So when you hit me hard and it's crippling, my job is to not show you that I feel that pain. Mm. But yeah. let me tell you, oh, yeah, I was, I was, I, you know, I was within inches of, of death. Yeah, I've heard you say that before. Yeah. yeah, that night. I mean, you look back, I mean, obviously, the first fight we've just kind of touched upon, the second fights was one of the most compelling fights we've seen in a British ring where Michael was a, for want of a better expression, Chris, administering a beating, you unleash a punch on him, which changes the course of his life, sends him to hospital, puts him in a coma for 40 days, which resulted in him having six brain surgeries, changing the course of his life immeasurably. Is it still very raw for you? Always. Yeah. Yeah. Do you well, hold yourself responsible? Of course. Well, well who, who, who threw the punch? You have a society now, oh, well, you know, it wasn't your fault. That doesn't make sense. That's lip service. Of course it was my fault. I delivered the punch. So stop talking on that. But you delivered but the punch to I was, a willing participant. I, I, yes. I, but nevertheless... Who would have done I, the same to you yes, in exchange. Yes. So do you, think it, do you think it's pragmatic or good for your well-being to actually attribute that blame to you. I know you're the person that administered the blow, but that was the nature of the beast. Yeah. He has your he has the same yeah. he has That's the same true. spirit, the same heart. Yes. So do you think you're being a bit unfair on no, yourself? No, I'm not being unfair. I'm being honest. And the only way you actually live a life which you can enjoy is if you are honest. If you're not living with honesty, then you're being a fool only to one person, and that is yourself. Feels like, but that feels a bit like self-flagellation. It feels like you're self what? Self-flagellation. Flagellation. What a yeah. good word. Tell me what if you that like means. that. It means that you're you're whipping yourself. No, you're blaming whipping. yourself not, for something that was the nature of the beast. That was the business that you were in. Hold you on. weren't you weren't tiggling uh, one another. Yeah, but I don't I don't understand. I understand the word now, yeah. but I don't understand how you can separate. Of, because I don't see it. As, I mean, it's not my gift. It's your gift, right? But as an impartial observer, yeah. objective in my being, yeah. I look at it and say, I wouldn't. I don't look at you as being culpable and to blame for it. I look at the circumstances of the fight that then you were in. Then, you were both winning consensual adults in a business that you both signed up for. Sure. And that was the nature of the beast. Let me you tell weren't you doing what, it to someone mother, that wasn't defending themselves. My mother taught me how to be a man. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Queen Elizabeth 
taught me how to be a man. Yep. Okay. The second. Said, yep. Okay. So that means you take responsibility. Not that there's going to be a society or a government or you know a public who would say, "Well, really, you know, it's not your fault. It was my fault." Period. Don't try to excuse it. That's why we have a society now, which are people are accountable. Yeah, I, I don't disagree. Well, if you don't disagree, start following the narrative. But I t- but I t- and the narrative is Michael Watson did to Chris Eubank that what no other fighters fighter but, has done. One, two, and he should be credited for and it. And that's a different conversation. The why po- should it be a well, different I'll conversation? Tell you what's a different conversation because we're talking about what you'd. It's like if I got in a car, and I was drink driving, and I drank too much, and I ran some over and killed them then I would be entirely responsible for that situation because I'd made certain choices that the person that was the victim of it had no choice in and that were my choices. The choices that were made for you, and it's not for me to tell you or give you benediction or validation for what you think. If you think that you want to carry this around and you're responsible for it, it's your gift. I'm just talking as another man talking to another man about objectivity. I don't think in the sport that you were in that you should blame yourself. If you do, then who am I to tell you that you shouldn't? Let me let me look to camera. Do you mind? No, you no, go ahead. Okay. So, you know, unless, you know, you as individuals watching this, unless you can take responsibility for what is obviously, obviously your uh, doing, uh, fault, yes, fault, uh, 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 justified in the system of uh, what they call boxing. If you don't take responsibility, you are a nobody. Was it a misdeed, Chris? A misdeed. You should take responsibility no. for misdeeds. No. You should be accountable for the things that you do in life that are bad. Yes. This wasn't a bad thing. This no. was a byproduct of the industry that you were in. That's right. You I did, did your job. Hold on. I did my job, but I'm not in there to hurt my brother. I'm not in there to kill my brother. No, you're in there to do your job, and your job involves hurt. Yes. And all I'm doing is recognizing the fact that I hurt him, which was not my intention. Okay. So to me, the extent. Me opening to the up, extent. Me opening up like this. Is showing you, young man, how to be a man. Yeah, it's beautiful being a man, owning up. Not not looking at what society is telling you. Look at what they're doing now with Michael Watson. Michael Watson... The he's a remarkable man, by the hold way. Hold on. Yeah, but what have you done for him? What, uh, don't answer that. What have you... Okay. He's a people's champion. What have you done for Michael? Start doing it now. What have you done for him? I'm asking. There's no judgment in that. I'm just asking. Because you just said to me, what have you done for him? So tell me what you've done for him. What I've done for him? Mm. Okay. Rather than... I, I will tell you. I t- I'll tell you... I'll tell you one. One thing. And and there's a lot more than this. But I'll tell you one. The most important thing to me in terms of a symbol was that WBO Super... Uh, sorry. Middleweight Championship belt. Mm-hmm. I put that in an auction for Michael. Right. Okay. That It went for £3,000. I was talking to Steve Bunce about this the other day. I cried. I was crying about it because the most important symbol to me, which symbolizes to my brothers, I did it, something you said I couldn't do, mm. and all I ever wanted was respected from, from them. So in doing it, that symbol I put in an auction for Michael Watson's benefit. So hold, hold on, Go hold on. Okay, I was crying that I'd given that belt away because I had worked so hard for this symbol to say to my brothers, I'm worthy of your respect. Now, this is the point. That's what I've done for Michael. And that's one thing. I'm not going to talk about the other things. That's something that's, I'm proud of that. That's who you are to be, young men. Young men, that's who you're supposed to be. You're supposed to be compassionate. You're supposed to uh, forgive. You're supposed to help. You're supposed to be objective. You're supposed to, in one word, L-O-V-E, love. These epiphanies that you have, uh, that have been milestones in your life, when the tragedy and the circumstances that unfolded with Michael and all that went with it, was the epiphany to change you as a fighter? Um... I think you mentioned it yourself, didn't you, about you lost the finishing instinct. Yeah. 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 But my my father had told me at the time, he said to me, you know, I see, effectively, in English, he said, I see you're suffering with this. Mm-hmm. But this is the only business in which you can actually take a man's life and go home. Yeah. You know, if you're not willing to do that, you should get out of the business. Yeah. My dad told me that. Sure. 
Uh, he, but he, did it change you, Chris? I mean, yeah, I, yeah. You know, sure, right. I lost my finishing instinct because because the power in me, which is mum, right? What what is that? That is that is a sensitivity. That mm. is a empathy. Mm. That's why I was so difficult to beat because I had feelings for yeah. my brothers who I was fighting. Did it going forward? I'm going to I'll get onto other fights, but just going forward to recent times. It's 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 mooted that you said to Junior when he's fighting Nick Blackwell, stop hitting him in the face. Is the genesis of that conversation with your son in a fight with a very viable fighter to stop hitting him in the face? Was it seeded in that? Well, not even. But I know that I know what can happen. Yeah. And I can see that the referee, for whatever reason is not stopping this fight, which clearly should have been stopped uh, two rounds before. Certainly in the seventh round, yeah. Junior had the explosivity at this time. Mm -hmm. There isn't anyone, not even you, Knowledge. Yeah, Spencer Fearon. Not even Spencer can find a fight, a British title fight, as, as good as that particular fight. Junior was on fire, and there were some people, and, you know, I've never really mentioned their names, but I'm going to mention their names today. Tyson Fury and Billy Joe Saunders, they were goading uh, uh, Junior. And, you know, before the fight, they'd come into the changing room. Yeah. Let, let me you've tell said, you. You've said this before. And I, and yeah. I, and I don't blame them yeah. because, you know, they're a tight-knit community. I don't blame them, but this is what uh, ignited Junior to put on a performance that you have not seen anyone produce mm. since. You don't look. You may not look at the fight because, obviously, what happened to Nick, to Nick happened. Mm. But if you look at Junior in that fight, you will see that he had the beating of anyone on the planet yeah. when he was that Chris Eubank. Well, we're the one about, who listened. We're the talk, one who listened. We'll talk about him I don't know whether we have the time now. No, okay. But we'll, we'll try and get to him, right, if we can. Right. Um, was it, did, it, did it hurt you? Did it really matter to you, the Steve Collins fight? Steve Collins is a nice man, but he's made this film recently. And a lot of it was made out of how he outpsyched you and got you into a space and place where you weren't deploying the logic that you've deployed previously. Um, and with the, the hypnotherapy and all that went with that. And the losing of the O. Now, you're unbeaten. You go in against Steve Collins. I thought it was remarkable that you went both fights, fought him twice in Ireland. I can't quite, why, can't, can't quite work out why you'd want to do that. There's nothing like going into the lion's den. It's beautiful. Is it? Yeah. Yeah. But, because it, it shows... Kahunas. Yeah, it does. Yeah, yeah it absolutely <laughs> carry on, does. Carry on, carry on. Absolutely does. And you lose your O, and you and 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 the and the rumor, and you can dispel it, or you can and you can confirm it. Is this at scenarios like Collins being hypnotized and being able to phase you out and phase in whatever he wants to got to you? Is that right? Yeah. Why did you allow that to happen? Because I'm a sensitive soul. Is he better fighter than you? Um, Do they have more heart in you than those fights? I would say this to you, okay? Uh, uh, he has proved that to be the case. Why would you ask me something that he has proved? Because I'm asking you because I want to hear your reaction. My because reaction? You, because you've made a big deal my, and, I've, and I've taken a lot from this conversation about the separation of powers mm -hmm. and the separation of powers of this and this, right? Mm -hmm. And so for me, listening to you, mm -hmm. it's difficult for me to compute that someone's going to out-heart you. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you what, that's exactly what he did. He mm -hmm. out-hearted me. Mm -hmm. Not so much the first fight, but I'm not going to go into that. The second fight, I went to the premiere of that movie yep. in London, and let me tell you this. The first thing I actually got up and said, you know, uh, director, you've got another movie here. Because the second fight is far more interesting than the mm -hmm. second because he beat me. Uh, he beat me in such a way where there wasn't any mind games going on in my head. I had come prepared. There wasn't any fog. Okay. Watch. I mean, watch. Got it. If you look at that fight there, mm. you will see a, a, a better or another or a sequel to this movie. Mm -hmm. Oh, no, I congratulate Steve. Mm. And one of the things I said after the fight was as follows. I told you, I'm just a guy. Mm. You know, if you've got the mind, it can be done. Moving on from you to a thorny subject between us, I think. I don't think it's overly thorny, but I think it could be, which is your son. 
Um, I have children. So, you know, I'm not going to go into that subject because I, I would imagine it's a very sensitive one. But a lot of people, and I think very motivated people, because they didn't like some of the things that you were saying, because a lot of the things that you were saying in the conversation that you had with me and Jim White made a lot of sense to me and made a lot of sense. And there was accusations about the way that people behave inside the sport. And a lot of people said, Callis Allen said, that we took advantage of you, that you weren't in a fit state of mind and that you were, you know, monopolized and manipulated now, I tell you what, it must be bloody difficult to, to, to have got that outcome because I don't think you're a particularly manipulatable person. So when you hear these noises coming from Eddie Hearn or Calla Sowland saying, what an awful thing to have done to Chris Eubanks Sr., to put him in a room and to ask him questions and to put him in a space because he's not together, he's not himself, there's lots of things that have gone on in his life that only one can imagine or not wish to imagine, and he's not... Um, not well. When you hear that, what do you think to that? If you can keep your head when all about you are losing theirs mm -hmm. and blaming it on you, if you can trust yourself when all men doubt you, but make allowance for their doubting too, if you can be patient, if you can wait and not be tired of waiting, or being lied about, don't deal in lies, mm -hmm. or being hated, don't give way to hating. The, these because I, I thought you were together i thought you said what you wanted to say yeah i thought you said it with fortitude and substance and you backed up the points about the nature of the industry those that have got the authority those that have got the power and the ones that shouldn't and i felt it was engaging and fascinating which is why i wanted you back here to speak between you and i without commercial breaks and whatever else because i felt that there was so much that i was listening to that i concurred with them but also didn't know anything about and can only get it from someone as insightful as you. Well, I only can say this. There are, there are, and I can see why they would be this way, but these people are afraid of the truth. And that's all I have to speak is the truth. If I talk about one fighter who weighs 147 pounds and he's put in with a fighter who weighs 160 pounds, this was uh, Gennady Golovkin yeah. against Kell Brook. Brook. Yeah. When I bring something like that up, I have to because it's against the law. Mm. And if you break the law, you're, you're running amok and you're putting the lives of these fighters in danger. And I don't blame this young man for doing yeah. it. I don't blame him because the society is corrupt. The society is all about capital. What can I do? What can I get away with? What can I flex? And, I, and, and again, and I don't blame him. I don't have any dislike for the man. Yeah. I, I have to love him, and I'll tell you why. Because his dad was good to me. Yeah, you're talking about Eddie in, and Barry now, right? Yeah in, yeah, in spite of the things which were perpetrated against me, all of these things are a blessing now because I can explain to youngsters coming up behind me what to watch out for, what, for what to do and what not to do. So I don't, you know, I've never had anything against... Uh, uh, the Hearns, yeah. in spite of everything that they've done. But they've just made me stronger. They've given me a very challenging time. Mm. But I'm grateful for it because, look at me, I'm still here. And but I'm still smiling. Hold on. And I am winning. <laughs> Sorry. I am the winner. <laughs> but, Sorry. But, <laughs> I'm the king. I look fun dreadlocks. I'm the king. <laughs> put aside um, the um, the sentiment of winning and losing, and put aside if for a second you're okay and your mind is together and you are together aren't you well well again i say of because i annoyed me because they accuse people like me i sat in a conversation with you where you you told me off outside the studio because i used a word you didn't like because i swore it was it was i was doing it in a colloquialism but you but you, told, you but you told me off and i took it and it, you. that's fine and we had that conversation and in the studio you were very strong in the conversation, and I did not get the sense that in any shape or form that, um, that you were manipulated or taken advantage of. I, I would say But the this. reason why I'm saying it, Chris, is yeah. because these guys got to say this shit. Yeah. Excuse my language. Yeah. They got to say it. The yeah. Kalasalans that don't care about your well-being and don't care about the well-being of your son, by the way, yeah. get to say these things, and then nobody gets to respond to it. Yeah. And that's why I'm bringing it up now, because it agitated me, because I felt the things that they were saying about you right. were disparaging, disingenuous, yeah. and unfair, and insulting. Well, well, 
you know, the proof of what you've just said is happening right here and now. You know, I've I've come into the studio here. Mm. I've been on all of these TV shows. You know, I'm some cooking star now, I hear. <laughs> no, but the, the point I'm making is that I'm out there and everyone else seems to be pleased with my performances because everything is a performance. Yeah. How did you come across? Um, I'm mm. as compass mentis as... As I've ever been, uh, I don't, you know, when I see people complaining, that's good because yeah. because it's called clickbait. But they're diminishing you. What they're trying to do is diminish you by because they don't like your arguments. What okay. you were saying okay. was solid and mm. substantial mm. about the industry. And because it means they're in the crosshairs, mm. what they'll do, because they do it to me in different ways, yeah. what they do is they take you down by mm. diminishing, they play the man and not the game. And what I say is this. Ah. Uh, that's beautiful. I, actually, I'll I'll just rephrase what I was going to say. Don't hate the players. Hate the game. If you if you hate the players, then you're being a numpty. <laughs> no, don't be a numpty. <laughs> uh, avoid the numpties. Okay. Uh, this life is a game. Boxing is a game. My brother Simon died of frontal lobe dementia, okay? The suffering he went through is something I couldn't watch in the last year, six months of his life. But that's a game, you know? Him being put into these fights, being called at two weeks' notice or a week's notice and being paid £400 by the current, even the current promoters. All of that, I don't blame them. I don't blame Frank Warren. I don't blame uh, Mickey Duff. I don't blame uh, Barry Hearn. I don't blame these guys because this is the game. My my brother was uh, a victim of it, but it's not illegal. What I want and what I'm asking for is for the law to be followed. The law. There are rules. The British Boxing Board of Control have rules. Robert Smith, Mr. Smith, has rules. Let's just abide by the rules. That's the only way we are going to be the bastion that we are, which is to uh, propagate the correct behavior by following the rules. And the points that we were talking about were the promoters and their activities, the nature of the fight that was being orchestrated, the boiling down of your son down to 157, the motivations behind those that are doing it. Those are the things that we were discussing and the strong views that you had about how these people should behave themselves okay, I, and should can, be held to account. Can I, can I say? Uh, yeah, so, of course you can. So, so, so Junior now walks around at about 12 stones 6, which is about 174, 174 mm. pounds? Okay, mm. all right. So imagine him now coming down to 160, which is what these... Numpties. One fifty-seven. They wanted him. Uh, no, that's what they mm. that that that's what they wanted then. Mm. That was straight attempted murder. That's what you said. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so you saw him at one fifty-nine on the scales. Emaciated. Emaciated, as you've just heard Simon say, emaciated. So it means he can't get down to one sixty now without without being in a position where he doesn't have punch resistance. I am protecting my son. I love my son. I don't want to lose another son, at least while I'm alive. I don't want to lose another son, okay? Leave Christopher Livingston Newbank Jr. alone. Leave him alone, okay? Weights fight weights. 147 fights 147. Harlem the Gold Eubank is the fight for you, Connor. Leave my son alone. Nigel? Come on, leave my son alone. Okay, and the hands. What do I say to you? You know, listen to your list, Barry. I'm not going to talk to anybody else. Barry, listen to your wife. The reason we don't hear of her is because she is right-minded. She is correct-minded. Okay, she knows what the racket is. Leave Junior alone. Let him go on and fight out his career. Okay, all this money. That you're, that you're making him look at all this, leave him alone. Waits, fight, waits. Okay? You don't fight, you don't, you know, the, the, the Kelbrook uh, against GGG, the boiling my son down to 157, you know, 
You're not numpties. So stop acting like you are. You are not. This is where you and I, not crossed swords, but we had a departure from the conversation where I suggested to you, and I know what you said, and I, and I understand it, but your son is a grown man, and you said to me, if you don't feel it, you're going to learn. Right? But he's a 33-year-old man. Yes. And he makes his own, and all of the Eddie Hearns and the Barry Hearns and the Kalasaulans, Kalasaulans that, that are influencing the outcome by waving money in front of your son, Yes, it's his choice. Yeah. To, to make those decisions. And when you say mm. someone taking him down is tantamount to murder, yes. I understand yes. why you're saying it. Murder is something that you don't participate in. You're the victim of. Chris, your son, is choosing to participate in fights that put him in the way of the mortal jeopardy that you fear for him Yes, as a grown man. And this is where you and I exchange views and you were... Uh, not comfortable with me suggesting that and, and 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 I want to rehash that conversation because again I don't understand I understand you remonstrating for the purpose of this show with those that you believe that have influence your boy is nobody's fool let me tell you something okay junior okay when it comes to money okay you will see the money and only the money whatever it will cost you to get that money you don't mind signing away, signing your signature to get that money. But let me tell you, it doesn't work that way, son. It doesn't work that way. You will get seriously damaged, okay? And if you don't, somebody else will. So the rules have to be followed, not for your sake, or not only for your sake, but for the sake of other fighters who don't know. And those who will not listen, I don't want you to be the example that they then follow of someone who didn't listen to those, why would I go against you? The things I did for you, Junior. The things I did for you. <laughs> You've had all these trainers and all these managers and all these, none of them will ever come close to what I gave you, which you now know. You see, I don't want to do any condemning here. Once upon a time, Barry Hearn said, I wish I'd forgiven him for that he was a slave master. And that Chris Eubank came and changed the game. I haven't changed the game unless you actually stand by what you said. We are no longer like that. Speak to your people. They are running amok. And it will end up... <laughs> it will end up looking very... Looking. Being. Not looking. Being very bad for you and your family. Stop it. Susan... Okay, I haven't spoken to you in many, many years. And when we did speak, it was only on, uh, you know, a, 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 a basis which was, was fleeting, I know. But I've, I've looked at you and I saw your face. I know, I know what's in your mind. I know that you know what these people are doing. And, you know, your son has come up now in this, uh, in this horrifically on unfavorable uh, 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 business to you and your feelings. I know, I know that you know. Tell your son to leave my son alone. Weights fight the same weights. Susan Hearn. Thank you, by the way, for the song, Simply the Best. <laughs> it's been... It's been some journey. But Junior has to be left alone. Uh -huh. You said, Chris, about people looking after your son that were PE teachers, that weren't capable of giving him the kind of experiences that only you could give him because you've been there. Mm -hmm. And this was post the loss to Liam Smith. Mm -hmm. And you made an observation about Liam Smith, and, and I, it wasn't the most complimentary of observations because you didn't think that he should be beating your son, even though Liam Smith is a world champion, or was a world champion. Mm -hmm. Bo McIntyre went into the corner. Your son won the rematch against most people's expectations that he wouldn't be able to dig deep into the well. Are you more comfortable now that that the circumstances that he's got slightly better people that have, that have fought, Bo McIntyre fought, he was a fighter, not a great fighter, but notwithstanding that, he fought, he put his hands up, he went in a ring and fought at heavyweight level. He's trained the best, arguably, the pound-for-pound pound best fighter in the world, 
Terence Crawford, aren't you more comfortable that your concerns for your son's tutelage and guidance is in better hands than maybe it was previously? I will say this to you, okay? Excluding yourself? There's a common sense at play here. you got to look at his age. He's 34 years old. Mm -hmm. you got to look at his last performance and compare his last performance and specifically that performance you got to match that against him fighting uh, Nick Blackwell. Mm -hmm. And you have to know that he is not, he doesn't have that explosivity anymore. He doesn't have that explosivity anymore. One, two, he showed that he doesn't have the punch resistance that he once had. By In the, the first fight, yeah. With Liam Smith. Yeah. Yes, okay. So what I say is this, okay. If he's fighting at super middleweight, I don't have any, I, I don't have no, anything. No, 168, yeah. Yeah, one, yeah, if he's fighting at 168, you know, you go ahead and do what, but you cannot come down to 160. I will not allow that. I will not allow it, or let me rephrase it. May the divine providence not allow that fight to ever happen, okay? You are to stay at 168. And, you know, matchroom, you know, let Connor go and have his illustrious career here in the United Kingdom and then in the United States because he beats them all. That's how fantastic I think he is. Yeah, I've always backed that young man. I've always backed you, Connor. I've always backed you, okay? You're sensible. Uh, you know, if, if it's true that you've said things about me uh, which are not complimentary, I don't mind that because I'm looking at, I'm looking at the people that you're around. You know, yes, you know, here it is. You know the spirit world, okay? That's how I know you. That's how that's how I know you're an honest man. The people around you are part of a gang. It's a team thing. You're the mark, okay? The only person that's going to look out for you is you, supposed to be your dad, and people like me, okay? You can trust me. Yeah, you've seen me get up in a fight I can't win and walk back into the fire. You can trust me. I'm not going to give you any... I'm not going to mislead you. You know, I'm a lawman. But they're going to have this fight, Chris. No, they're not. Well... Uh, uh, no, uh, hold on, hold on, hold, hold on, hold on. I'm not going to discuss that with you because okay. I've just said the fight doesn't happen. You can't it's stop finished. it. Again. You can't uh, stop it. Yeah, again, I, I stopped it the first time. I stopped it the first time. Do you want me to qualify that? Sure. Okay. Yeah. When the fight was made, I said that fight is not happening. I didn't mm -hmm. say anything. I didn't say anything again up until uh, the day of the fight, where it was cancelled the day before. Uh, so, so let's do the same thing again. Fine. What's that? Divine intervention? Uh, I'm asking you because, well, I mean, do you believe Conor I'm, Ben, I'm gonna, do you believe Conor gonna, ben has taken PEDs? No. You don't. Well, how can I believe it when I saw him go on to the brightest star or the bi the brightest light in the country, Piers Morgan, on his show? How can I how can I doubt him? He made a fool of himself. Well, you see, now you would say that. I said it to him. Why did he make a fool of himself? Because he wasn't prepared for the interview and it was a wrong space to be in. And that's exactly why he's innocent. That's what the innocents do. They're naive. And, and I'm going to say this to you, okay? Uh, bad? It's not that they're bad. This is just the way the game works. And everyone's looking after their own kingdom. Agreed. Okay? So, you know, I don't say they're bad people. I don't say any of the Hearns are bad people. This is just the way enough. things are today. Okay? And we have to be forgiving of everyone. Listen, I was once a shoplifter. Mm. Okay? I, I, am I proud of it? Well, in a way I am in that I can tell youngsters not to go that way. It doesn't work. So I don't, you know, we were all sinners at one point. Okay, and the people who are doing things which are wrong and are against themselves, when they're working against themselves, they'll they'll get out of it. But give them a chance. Were you impressed with Chris' performance against Liam Smith? Were you impressed with your son's performance against Liam Smith in the rematch? Yes. Yeah. Why were you impressed? Because he won. Did you think that Liam Smith was at the same level that it was in the same in the first? I thought Liam Smith was a shadow of the fighter that fought Chris in the first fight. 
you don't need any more clickbait. We've done a good interview. It's not clickbaiting. Yes, I'm asking a question. But you're asking you're asking a question which is beneath the it's beneath the questioning and the the level of content that we've been having. Do you think your son's going to be a world champion? I don't I don't watch enough now. All I can do is protect him from the fights that he shouldn't be in. But I'm not looking at his career anymore, which is why I I I, I can't I can't see where his people are going to lead him. You know, he said you know, I want to run my own career now. So, you know, I'm doing as he's asked. I know this. If he had asked me before or told me before, I would have been gone then. Mm. It was only after 10 years he said, right, I want to do it my way now. Which is... Is it his right? Yes, it is. It, yeah. it is his right. See, I'm very impressed with your son. I wasn't very impressed with your son. And you and I have locked horns because I made an observation about calling him a charlatan. And the context of that was based upon his own words, based upon his own proclamations, based upon every time Chris came on and spoke to me, I was listening to how much money he'd made and what his house in Las Vegas was like, whilst I'm watching him fight fighters that are nowhere near the world titles that he tells me he's going to fight. Have so, you ever heard of the term, who the cap fits, let them wear it? Do, do, is that meant to mean that I'm a charlatan by association? No, not at all. No. I wouldn't say anything of the sort to you okay. like that. Why would I do that? I don't know. Well, then tell me what you mean by that. If it seems that a person is interested in uh, material things and money, yeah, put that's his cap. That's. Uh, but you didn't uh, like me calling him a charlatan. You off air before. No, you, you're talking. You, that's nonsense. Is it not? I, no, it's nonsense. Well, did, we did not have a situation before this show where you didn't think it was appropriate for me to have said that. Well, it was it was it didn't make sense in terms of the fact that you've made a statement. Yeah. Okay. And you know, I can't I can't say that you're not right. I can't I didn't I didn't say that you're not right. I it's, don't it's I don't not know. my right to say it. You you have you have the right to do, mm. to say whatever you want to say. I didn't I I didn't berate you for it. No. I what I don't what think I you're point, impressed what, by me saying I, it. You know what you know, that does impress me. That you have the uh, the wherewithal to actually say something like that because I can't didn't because I can't I can't say wait, he's not he hasn't got the world championship so he he hasn't so it it could be lip service mm. so I was in a position where uh, well what do I say I'm not going to lie for anybody no but <laughs> point let's be clear between you and I like me asking you whether he beat a diminished Liam Smith is nothing to do with clickbait. It's to do with an opinion of an educated boxing and fight man that can understand it better than I can because I can be corrected by the level of knowledge that you have, not because it it gives somebody clickbait. It's an opinion. It's it's an opinion, and your opinion is far more educated than mine in the same way that I've educated my view on, on your son because I thought it was noise and substanceless, and I've watched him, and I've listened to him, and I think he's brilliant with the media. I think he is an absolute um, showman of the highest order when he speaks. When I listen to him, I think he's phenomenal. I think he's one of the most, but not with not his achievements, but the bankability of the way he conducts himself in the media. I get it now. I didn't get it before. So my point was, when I'm asking you questions about your son, it's not to drag you down a pathway that people can suggest is clickbait. It's because I want the insight. You're a different animal. You're a different breed. You have a different way of looking at the world. So it's got nothing to do with clickbait. So get that out of your head. Do you think your son will be a world champion? Do you hope for him to be a world champion? Sure. Yeah. I've spoken to Connor recently. I'm not going to betray any confidences because it's not going to do that. They're adamant they're going to have this fight. They're adamant they're going to have it. And they're not going to stop. And the British Boxing Board of Control, who I'm a major advocate of giving them more powers giving them more legislation, and then being worthy of it. You say you're going to stop this fight. How will you, how will you possibly stop this fight besides them, divine you, intervention? You, 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 you just said them being worthy of it, as though you have some standard to be compared to the Boxing Board of Control. You don't. And let me tell you what I mean you by don't. that. Let me tell you about that. No, but they've I, got they've I, got to uphold the laws properly. What, they've got to do their jobs, but they've so got to be, they look after and, you guys properly. So say that, and, that's what I mean. and, and yeah, well, you didn't. That, that's oh, not it is. What, it's, it's, that's it's, not it's what semantics. came across. No, it's the way you've taken it. I'm I'm responsible mm -hmm. for um, uh, the intention of my words, not responsible for your interpretation of it. 
So my intention is that the British Boxing Board of Control is a valuable entity. It needs to be cherished and empowered and legislated so and given proper them, results. So speak to them as such. I've done that. About them as such. I have done. But I also believe they need to be worthy of it because I do believe at times that they don't do the things that they should do. Hmm. There's inconsistencies. Hmm. And as an objective observer that was involved in the business of sport, and, and, and I'm not an establishment person, but I see the value of it. And I think that an effective British boxing board of control that looks after fighters, when Bradley Skeet is getting knocked on his backside and punched when he's on the ground, and then subsequently loses a fight for no reason other than poor refereeing and the British boxing board of control condone that as a man that has empathy with the fighter that's gone in there, I feel that's poor and I think it should be said. Is that wrong? Am I wrong? I guess you'll be the judge of that. Well, no, I'm asking you because you have an educated view. Because you've just told me that I've spoken inappropriately. Yeah, you you, you spoke about a governing body as, as you, you said, you know, worthy, if they're worthy. I would argue they're not fit for purpose, Chris. In you would argue that? Yeah? yeah, I would argue that. Okay, well, I'm here to tell you as follows, that I support them. I am them. Me too. Really? I do, absolutely. Okay, so speak, to, speak of them with that... Enama. Speak, speak honestly, though. You speak honestly? Yeah, I do. Okay, all right. I speak honestly and objectively with no skin in the game. I think they need to be stronger. They need to be better empowered. They need to have better legislation. They need to enforce rules better. They need to be better financed. They need to have more resource. They need to have better control over UCAD and the, and the governance of what UCAD are doing in the sport to get rid of the drug testing and have real... And I think that's not unreasonable. It's not disrespectful. And that's what I mean when I say... They need to be worthy. Not that they're individuals that are lacking substance. I mean, the, the institution itself needs to be ver worthy of the sport that you guys put your lives at risk in. Is that wrong? Again, you're going to be the judge of your own tongue. I assume you touching tap, tapping your wrist means we're out of time. We've been here an hour and a half now. Well, you've done brilliantly. I've enjoyed it. There's so much more I could have spoken to you about and so much more I could have learnt from you. But I've enjoyed the time that we've had together, and thank you for being upfront with me. My pleasure. Upfront with me, Simon Jordan, is brought to you by William Hill. Future episodes can be found on YouTube, Spotify, or wherever you find your podcasts. 18 plus, please gamble responsibly. Just, uh, uh, can I end on the last bastion? You know, if, if you, the public, do not believe in Queen Elizabeth II and her prerequisites for being a Brit, then the last bastion is me. <laughs> yeah, when it comes to the protection of boxing and the rules of boxing, which is to be upheld. Uh, and that's all, that's all this is about today and for now. Thank you, Chris Eubank. Mm -hmm. My pleasure.